Welcome to Worship with Grace United Methodist Church coming to you from the Houston Heights. We're excited that you could join us on this October 29th. We haven't met yet. My name is Pastor Kate. We're so glad that you're here and we'd love to connect with you this week. So if you're watching on Facebook, please drop your name and prayer request in the comments below. Or if you're on our website live streaming, there's a little connect button up at the top. We'd love for you to just drop us your name and email so we can tell you a little bit more about all that's happening at Grace United Methodist Church. We're so glad you've joined us for worship. Good morning, boys and girls. Hello. So today we are talking about some questions that people might have about God or the Bible or other things. And I was thinking about questions that people have had over time. Did you know that some time ago people used to wonder what it would be like to go on the moon? And that yeah. made them think that, figure out how to get there. <clears throat> so other people figured out how to make peanut butter from peanuts. I think that was George Washington Carver. And some other people had questions along the time. And see, questions are wonderful ways that God has given us our brains so that we can ask questions and figure out the answers. And I brought a book. Can you help me read the title? What does it say? Does God have a big toe? What do you think? So in this book, it's a book about questions that kids have about the Bible. So in it, there was a little girl named Irene, and she started to have this question, does God have a big toe? So she went to her mom, and her mom said, I'm too busy, go ask your father. And her father said, I'm too busy, go ask your grandpa. And grandpa misunderstood her and told her to go ask the king. And so she went to the king, and he said, that's a really good question. Let's find out. And so they began building a tall tower. A very tall tower because they wanted to get up to heaven so that they could check out to see if God had a big toe. Grown-ups, you may be thinking about this story, what it is. Uh, and so God was watching them do this, and God said, you know what? They're not going to stop building if I just knock it down. We don't want them to get up here all this way. 
So instead of knocking down this tall tower in the town of Babel, God decided to give them all a different way to talk to each other. So they got different languages so that they could not talk to each other and go all the way up top to go figure out if God had a big toe. So they're still wondering that. So what do you think? Do you think God has a big toe? We never know. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Do you have any other questions about God that you can think about our church? Well, my question is, when did Jesus learn to walk? Probably Jesus learned to walk when he was a little toddler. About, you know, Ellie learned to walk when she was about a year old. So he probably learned to walk about a year old. So that's a good question. Or he might have learned when he was an infant. Maybe he did. That's a good question. So boys and girls, questions are good to have about God because it helps us learn more about God so that we can learn more about God and how God wants us to be in the world and help our brothers and sisters Mommy. and everybody in need. Yes? Can we read this book? We'll read it at a different time. So let's say bye-bye to everybody. We'll, we'll do our, let's do our prayer. So hands in the air and hands in prayer. Dear Jesus who loves us, help us, we pray to be your good children and live the right way. Amen. Bye, boys and girls. Let us join in our affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus the Word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. 
We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death. In life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God, you have promised that where we ask, there will be answers. Where we seek, we will find. Where we knock, doors will be opened. And so we come before you today with our whole selves, carrying our joys, our triumphs, our questions, and our doubts. Lord, we lay all at your feet. Hear these prayers that we lift to you from our hearts and our mouths. God, we know your word is trustworthy and true. So all that we pray comes to you and we wait upon your answers. Give us such confidence, O oh God, that each day as your disciples, we might pray just as Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> happening in the life of Grace United Methodist Church, and I want to lift up just a couple of things for you. We are kind of spinning up our way into fall this week, so choir will be kicking off their rehearsals on this Thursday, September 2nd at 6.30. For this first rehearsal, you're invited to bring a little snack to share. Even if you don't think you're a singer, there's still a place for you, so come and join and learn how to lead others in the worship of God. We've got a couple of things coming up for kids. Uh, Messy Church, our first Messy Church of the Fall, is on Wednesday, September 1st. It's from 5.30 to 7.30. There is dinner that goes with that. Because there's dinner, we love it. If you could register at graceintheheights.org backslash register, just so that we have a good head count for who might be there. If you've not done Messy Church, it's a great opportunity to hear the Word of God, to play and do crafts together as a family in a way that is open and exciting for kids of all ages. Our children's program is also bringing back Sunday school starting on September 12th. In fact, September 12th is going to be a big launch for us here. We're starting children's Sunday school. We're restarting youth Sunday school. Adult Sunday school is moving to 10 a.m. So education will be happening at 10 a.m. And worship is moving to 11 a.m. So starting on September 12th, you will find us here both in person and online at 11 a.m. The following Sunday after that, on September 19th, we're going to be presenting Bibles to our third graders. So if you have a third grade child or a child older than third grade who didn't get their Bible in the last couple of years, please go online to graceintheheights.org backslash register to let us know and you can be part of Bible presentation on September 19th. 
all of this, all of the education that we do, the Bibles that we give away, our relationships with our neighbors is possible because of the financial gifts of our congregation. So if you'd like to support the ministry of Grace United Methodist Church, you can text GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 832-400-3324. You can always go online to graceintheheights.org backslash GIVE. And of course, you can drop a check or mail a check to our offices at 1245 Heights Boulevard in Houston, Texas. Let us offer a prayer for the gifts we shall receive. Lord, all that we have comes from your hand. We are grateful and we give back a portion of that to see that your work continues in the world. Bless these offerings of our hands to your service. Amen. several short scripture readings. The first comes from Isaiah. We're in the sixth chapter, verses one through three. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty. The hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. With two, they flew. And they called to one another and they said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is his and his full of his glory. Our second reading comes from Proverbs from the first chapter. Wisdom cries in the streets, in the squares she raises her voice. At the busiest corner she cries out, at the entrance of the city gates she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing, or fools hate knowledge? And finally, from Genesis 1, verse 27. 
So God created humankind in his image. The image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning, we're starting a new sermon series called Come With Questions. It's an opportunity to look at those questions of faith that are at once kind of the most basic, but also the ones where we most easily have doubts or get tripped up or maybe are a little bit afraid to ask. We're starting with one of the biggest ones. How do you see God or maybe what are God's pronouns or what does the image of God really mean? Before we get into these scriptures and our word for the day, would you say a prayer with me? God, in all your forms and images, you come to us. Open now our hearts and our minds that we might see you anew and in you learn something of ourselves. Help us to preach together your word for your people. Amen. It's a funny thing. If you ask kids to draw a picture of how they see God, you can almost tell kind of by age what some things you might get. When they're sort of like preschool into like early elementary, they will often draw a picture of somebody that they know, of their mom or dad, of their pastor, of an aunt or uncle, somebody who has really loved them well. It's only as we get older that these kind of outside images of God get baked into us. In fact, I'm sure as soon as I said, how do you imagine God, there's things that started to pop in your brain? Was it maybe an old man with a white beard? Was it maybe a great cloud of light? Was it an image of Jesus Christ that you saw on the wall of your Sunday school room as a child? We have literally hundreds and hundreds of ways that we talk about seeing God, and all of them are important. Because the way we see God, the way we talk about God, greatly impacts the faith that we live out. When we're talking about scripture, God shows up in a lot of ways. Usually, they're one of two kinds, either in a metaphor, we heard a couple of metaphors in our scriptures today, or a theophany. There's your seminary word for the day. A theophany literally means when God shows up in a tangible form, usually like something you can see in nature. Maybe the theophany that we know best comes out of Exodus, right? That kind of idea of a pillar of fire and of smoke or of the burning bush. You might picture in your head the Cecil B. DeMille, the great cloud of fire floating on the mountain as the people cross the wilderness below it. This idea of the God who is great and powerful and mysterious in the cloud, when we think about that fiery pillar, we, we have that sense of the omni-God, the God who is always present, who knows everything, who can do anything. But if you've read that story, that story of the people in Exodus who encounter this great theophany of God, you know that their first response was to be afraid. In fact, they were so afraid of the kind of thunder fire storm that they made Moses go talk to God while well, they stayed down in the valley. They felt so distant from God that they actually ended up making their own idol. And that story ended pretty badly. It led directly to the second commandment, which says, thou shalt not make graven images or have idols before me. It's a tricky thing to start picturing God. In fact, there's been whole times in church history where we thought that maybe you shouldn't even try and do it at all. Maybe God was just too big. Or maybe 
maybe it was okay if you made an image of Jesus Christ because that's what God had looked like, right? Or maybe it's okay if, you, if you're going to do an image of God, if you do the whole Trinity all together. We get a ton of art from the Middle Ages and the Renaissance that tries to smush together like an old man and a baby and a bird so that we're picturing all of the Trinity at once. During the Protestant Reformation, that, that's us, y'all, they actually went into churches and smashed altarpieces and stained glass windows because they just didn't think that you could ever draw an adequate picture of God. And that if you tried, you might be tempted to worship the picture instead of the Lord. It's a risky thing. There's always this little negotiation because we know that our relationship with God is more important than any single image. But we are humans, and we don't always deal with abstraction so well. We need to ground our understanding. We need these pictures. It has been the same from the time that Scripture was written through all of Christian history. And so you get these profound and beautiful images of God. You heard the, the image of God in creation, right? In Genesis where God formed us in our image. This might be the, the image of God that is most common for people. This kind of Michelangelo, great bearded father seated on the throne, arm outstretched in creative act. When we picture God as that kind of wise and powerful father, there's a sense of comfort. God is in control. God made all of this and God will take care of all of it. God knows more than we do. And trust me, someone needs to know more than I do about how the world works. But if that's the only way we picture God, well, what happens if father wasn't such a good relationship for you? Or what if we get to that place where we're tempted to say that if we image God as a man on a throne, that only men can speak for God? The way we picture God ends up forming our faith, and we have to be really careful that we understand ourselves as formed in the image of God, and we aren't tempted to form God in our image. That's why I love some of these other pictures that we picked up this week. This image of the spirit as the woman wisdom in Proverbs. The woman who's going through the streets calling people to remember to be smarter, to do better. It's not the only feminine image of God. Jesus himself says, don't you know that God is like a mother hen who longs to gather you in and give you comfort? Church, how often are we in those places where we just need to feel like God is the warm embrace, a voice whispered that says, it's going to be okay. How often do we need to have the God who is that grounded and guiding presence in our lives, like a great aunt or mother or sister? Someone who will tell us the truth, but always in love. We have this beautiful image of God that comes out of Isaiah. In fact, we, we sing a hymn out of this text. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. This God who is so big and so powerful that only the hem of God's robe fills the temple. The glory of God shines. The kavod of God embraces all. This is a God that almost leaves Isaiah standing mute. It's just overcome with the awesomeness of who God is. Those moments when we are so struck by beauty and wonder that we are left silent in inspiration. There are times when I need to be reminded that God is far bigger than will ever fit in my little body.
boxes. A time when I need God to show up and call me to something bigger than myself. But there's also those times that I find myself a little bit like Elijah. Maybe you know the story of the time that God showed up for Elijah. Elijah had been preaching the word and got really frustrated because no one was listening to him. And he goes out into the desert to find God to complain about the people. And so he goes up to the mountain of God and there's a great fire that comes. But God is not in the fire. And there's an earthquake that shakes the ground. But God is not in the earthquake. And there's a wind that blows like a hurricane through the valley. But God is not in the wind. And then Elijah hears the sound of sheer silence. And that's when Elijah goes out to meet with God, the God who comes in stillness, the God who is the still, small voice, who is close as breath and intimate as thought, who isn't in the big, flashy show, but is here and ready to have a conversation when we can get ourselves quiet enough to show up. None of these images of God is God complete and total, but all of them tell us a little something about who God really is. We need to imagine God because in imagining God, we give God room to show up and meet us where we are. We just get in trouble when we think that our image is the complete and total understanding. We should never be afraid to ask the question, what does God look like? Or how do you picture God? It's not bad. We just have to know that our answers will be incomplete, that God isn't one thing. Scripture never tries to capture God in just one image, but that all of the images, the wind and the fire, the mother hen, the woman who calls, the great kavod that spills out, all of them speak truth and speak into moments when we need God to show up that way. Maybe that's the greatest gift of having a God that is far too big for us to ever understand in one single breath or moment or image. In that bigness, God is everything that we could ever need. A God who is too big to be contained is too big to be overcome, too big to fall short of the places we need God to show up. Maybe we shouldn't get caught up on the questions, does God look like this or this? Does God say he or she? We are at our best when we dwell in the place where we are open to all that God can be and is and will be for us. Church, this week, I challenge you, do a little search. Grab books or articles or the Google box. Search for some images of God and take three of them and spend some time just journaling what each of those images teaches you about God. Let them push you. Let them help you to see God and the world in a new way. This we ask in the name of the Father and the Son, and by the Holy Spirit we say, Amen.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God make God's face to shine upon you and give you peace. And may you encounter the living God this week. Amen.